An elementary introduction to the Wolfram language. Lesson 2. Introducing functions. In this lesson, we will be looking at functions, which are the basis of the Wolfram language and its functionality. The functions that I will be introducing you to are the ones that are built into Mathematica. These built-in functions consist of a few things. The head, or the name, which is always capitalized, square brackets, and arguments or inputs within the square brackets that the function is doing something to slash acting on. The prime function that was discussed in the previous lesson is an example of a function. Here I'm going to type prime of 3, hit shift enter, and it's 5. In the above code, the actual word prime is the head, the 3 is the argument, and the output of the function is 5 because it is the third prime number. When you think about a function, you should think about what each part is doing. To sum it up in a sentence, the head of the function is telling the computer what to do with the arguments. To better understand how functions work and how to use them, we are going to look at the most basic ones, the arithmetic ones. That does not mean typing plus and minus, like in the last lesson, but it means using their actual functions like this. This is 2 plus 3. I'll do plus of 2 comma 3, hit shift enter, and it's 5. This is 11 minus 5. I'll do subtract of 11 comma 5, hit shift enter, and it's 6. This is 10 divided by 10. I'll do divide of 10 comma 10, hit shift enter, and it's 1. When looking at these functions, you can see that they all have one purpose. Each individual function does only one thing. Plus only adds its arguments, and subtract will only ever subtract its second argument from its first. So this leaves us with the question, what if we want to do something more complicated than these single purpose functions can do on their own? For example, what if we want to subtract 5 from 8 plus 9? We can do both separately like this, plus of 8 comma 9, we see it's 17, and then using that knowledge we can do subtract of 17 comma 5 and get our answer 12. That works, but with much more complicated code, that method becomes virtually impossible. What we have to do is combine functions by nesting them within each other like this. So I'm going to do plus of 8 comma 9, and then I'm going to wrap that all in subtract. So it becomes subtract of plus of 8 comma 9 comma 5, and then I hit shift enter and the output is 12. In the above code, the function plus is the first argument of another function subtract. It might seem a bit crazy, but it is a key concept for programming in Mathematica. Here's another example of nesting a function within another. This is 15 plus 3 divided by 9. So I'm going to first do plus of 15 comma 3, and then I'm going to wrap that in divide. So it then becomes divide of plus of 15 comma 3 comma 9. I hit shift enter, and it's 2. Now you've learned about four different Mathematica functions, and you only have a little over 5,000 more to go. Yes, there are over 5,000 functions in Mathematica. But don't worry too much because you don't have to learn them all and there are a few special ways that you use them without knowing them by heart. First of all, every function's name sounds just like what it does. That is the reason plus adds numbers and subtract subtracts numbers. So if you wanted to find the largest number, or in other words, the maximum number in a collection of numbers, you would use the function that sounds just like what it does, max. So here, I'm going to do max of a large collection of numbers, hit shift enter, and the output is 9. Here, I'm going to do max of another collection of numbers, and as you can see, the output is 8,232, because it is the largest number within that max. If you wanted a random integer, you would use the function called random integer. This code below provides a random integer between 0 and 100. So here I'm going to type random integer of 100, hit shift enter, and it's 11. I'll do it again, and it's 62 now. I'll do it again, and it's 57. I'll do it one last time, and it's 88. Random integer is providing a different random integer between 0 and 100 each time. Almost every function is just like those in that the name sounds just like what it does. For example, times multiplies its arguments by each other, as in x times y, power puts its first argument to its second argument's power, as in x to the y power, and the function min takes the smallest number or the minimum number from a collection of numbers. 
Now even though many functions do exactly what the name sounds like, it is still quite common to run into a function and not know what it does. When this happens, you can just test the function out. But if you want to know what it does before you use it, or you still cannot understand it even after you have tested it, you can use something called the Documentation Center by clicking on the Help tab above, or you can use the question mark as a shortcut. So, if somebody tells me about a really cool function called Fibonacci, I will go in and use the question mark. So here I'm going to go in and type the question mark, followed by Fibonacci, hit Shift Enter, and then I receive information on the function. The documentation, which the question mark just opened up, tells you anything you could possibly want to know about functions. And if you click on the little blue arrow, it takes you to an even more detailed explanation of the function. Here's Fibonacci in action. Here I'm going to do Fibonacci of 6. Hit Shift Enter and it's 8, because 8 is the 6th Fibonacci number. Here I'm going to do Fibonacci of 9. Hit Shift Enter and it's 34, because 34 is the 9th Fibonacci number. Here I'm going to do Fibonacci of 2000, a much larger number. Hit Shift Enter and it's huge. That is because it is the 2000th Fibonacci number. Now I hope you feel a lot more comfortable with functions. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next lesson.